are sitting here, a round of applause for yourselves. Because with you, Ghana has hope. With you, Ghana has a future. Because the ideas, I mean, we sip through those ideas and some of them that we were blown away. I was part of the team that were going through the ideas and we saw brilliant, brilliant ideas. We selected because the idea is good, but those that were not selected had an equally brilliant ideas. Ideas that are going to be built upon. So for some of them, we are not going to let go of these ideas at all. Every idea, we are still going to focus on them and see how best we can support you. But you are the select few, as we say, who are going to the end of the rope to see who will finish or who will touch the rope first. So I wish you all the best. My, my simple um, task this morning is to say congratulations to you for all the groups. And I'm going to come to you shortly. So make sure that all the group members are seated. I'm going to come to your table shortly um, to interview or ask you one or two questions. Um, so please get ready. Make sure you are settled. Everybody is settled. And I hope you have submitted, if you are doing a presentation, you have submitted your presentation here so we can project it for you. But we are going to have a good time. We are going to have a fun time. So, before I call, um, yeah, before I, uh, before we kick start, probably, um, I will call on Elikem, right? Elikem, this morning again, to come and give us a simple welcome address. And then, um, Araba, get ready. You give us the agenda for the day as well, okay? Thank you. Elikem, a round of applause for Elikem. Thank you, Francis. Good morning, good morning, everybody. How are we feeling today? I believe we've all eaten, right? How are we feeling today? Oh, are you sure? How are we feeling today? You are tense there. Don't worry. You get through it beautifully. But good morning to you once again, and welcome to day two of our judging panel event for the GSEPS Challenge. I want to say a big welcome to the judges, to the students, to our teachers, mentors, and all the other partners. It's been a wonderful journey we've been taking so far, and you've put together wonderful innovations that we can't wait to see. I just want to also say a big congratulations to all of you for making it here. Your submissions were part of a large pool and you were selected to be here so you are a winner just being here and like francis said if it happens that your idea is not selected to be in the top just know that we are also keen and interested in seeing what you have to do and we were looking at how best you can present and we are looking at supporting you all the way through so as you stand here today just take a deep breath in deep breath out don't be scared and just let us know what you have for us. Have a good morning to you all, and welcome once again to day two. Thank you. To help us do this, we have a team of judges who are going to steer this. It is not me. I am just a John the Baptist. Today, your fate is in their hands. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Makafui Awuku. He is the founder and CEO of Macintosh Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Leslie Awiretre. Thank you so much, Leslie. Thank you. Let's also welcome Eugenia Techi Menson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have here Johannes Thomas Arthur. <laughs> Our final judge for this morning in the person of Tony from West Africa. <laughs> so yesterday, um, Angela was in. But Tony is replacing Angela um, because she has a very busy schedule today. Thank you so much, Tony, for rep um, replacing Angela and taking up the road this morning. Thank you very much, Francis. And hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, judges. I guess you'll be wondering why we are in shades. Well, according to the Ghana Health Service, in 2021, about 207,200 Ghanaians are visually impaired. 3% of these are children below the age of 18. Most of these children are left with little or no resources at all to mingle with. This prevents them from associating themselves with the society because of their disability. As we all know, disability is not inability, as humans are differently enabled. That is why we, the MD, came together to do this wonderful blind stick. 
for Kofi, who is a blind young teenager and people like him, to serve as a favorite companion. Using science and technology, the engine smart cane transforms a regular walking stick into a visual aid, which is unique and equipped with special features to help the blind teenager to mingle and possibly play with his age mates in the community. Well, I am Jim Smartkin is having unique features like the panic button, which is being activated when the user presses on it twice and with the help of the GPS and the GSM model, it will send a coded message through SMS and the coordinates of the location where the user is to a trusted guardian in case the user is in trouble. And the sensor here, when it's getting closer to an obstacle, it will beep. So, uh -huh. we are hearing the device vibrating. So when it gets there, it will vibrate. And the solar panel, when there is no electricity during the daytime, the energy from the sun will charge the device. Thank you. Our dear judges, please take it away. Thanks. You put up some schematics of how the thing is done, but you never spoke to it. Do no. you understand what I'm saying? So I don't know if it will be possible to bring up the schematics again. And then secondly, what role did each of you play in putting this together? Thank you. So overall, I'm the main speaker for the team. But during the project, I, I was paired with my Margaret to look for some of the components, dig deeper into the components we use for the device. And I also worked as a resource mobilization manager. So I searched for how the device will be feasible. OK, I, Imano, also worked as the resource investigator, looking for all the components that will make our device feasible. Hi, Margaret. I'm the organizer for the group, but I and Ella research for the components and their uses. My name is Michael. I'm, I'm the designer of the engine with the help of Jude to design our pro products. Thank you. OK. Hello. OK, so nice innovation. Because I, I always say that people living with various forms of disability in our part of the world spend almost all their energy trying to move from one place to another. And eventually has none left to actually live their dreams. So these type of innovations are good. So tell me something. Those two small uh, silver buttons down there, what are they for? Yes. They are the ultrasonic sensors. What do they sense? They sense objects. Okay. Primus inter Paris. Please come. Fantastic. So that's your microphone. Please come this way a bit so that you are nicely spread out for the cameras. Fantastic. Your time starts now. Good morning and welcome to a presentation by Primus inter Paris on the use of cow dung as a mosquito repellent. So our materials used in our products, we have cow dung, neem leaves, we have sawdust, we have incense and lemon grass oil. Introduction and background. In recent years, in all tropical and subtropical countries, Mosquito-borne diseases have become a major health problem to humans. The diseases transmitted through mosquitoes include malaria, yellow fever, and dengue fever, just to mention a few. The control of such serious diseases are becoming increasingly difficult in, in developing countries, including Ghana. In an attempt to control mosquitoes to prevent the spread of these diseases, advancements in chemical sciences have formulated various synthetic repellents. 
These synthetic repellents have been extensively used for mosquito control by killing adult mosquitoes and thereby preventing them from biting humans. The deleterious impact of these synthetic formulations on users, the environment and on target population has brought about the search of alternative, simple, effective and sustainable method of controlling mosquitoes. In view of this, a team of five young researchers are currently exploiting natural substances to be used as insecticides for controlling mosquitoes. The formulation is safe, eco-friendly, cheap, easy to use, and has maximum repellence against mosquitoes. Hence, an effort was made to prepare cow dung-based herbal mosquito repellent. Materials and methods. The materials that were used in the preparation of the mosquito repellent are cow dung, neem leaf, lemongrass lemon oil, incense, and sawdust. Cow dung contains plenty of menthol, ammonia, phenol, indoor, formalin, and especially its bacteriophage property eradicate pathogens and are a recognized disinfectant. The other plant products are potential sources of mosquito control, which are carefully selected based on their insecticidal properties. Preparation. The methods used in preparing the mosquito repellents are as follows. The materials are sun-dried to remove moisture. The dried materials were then ground into powder using an adding rebo and a masher. The powder is then mixed with lemon, lemongrass oil in the ratio of 10 grams is to 10 grams. The paste is then filled in a purple stock and allowed to dry. The product is tested and was found to have 98% efficacy. In conclusion, the ingredients of cow dung and phytochemical compounds of plant extract are responsible for mosquito repellents. Cow dung provides a herbal repellent with long-lasting protection, safe for human life, and domestic, skin, and domestic animal skin with no side effects on the environment. The formulation is safe, eco-friendly, cheap, easy to use and has a maximum repellence against mosquitoes. Production of these natural repellents will help the individual to earn a living. Thank you. Uh, the question that I want to ask is, I've seen the demonstration and I'm wondering how I would use it. Okay, how, so how does it stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it is in the candle form. So you light it like how you light, you light a candle and the liquid will come out. You dip it on a material, then you make it stand and you not put it at a place where it will get into contact with any material that can bend. So either a metal substance or a glass, but not a plastic. And it should be away from other materials that can bend. It should be isolated somewhere. That is a wonderful explanation. I would have liked it in your presentation. Thank because you. Because that really does help, and it informs me that maybe this is something that I should buy. Yes. Um, the other question is the price. I, I don't know what it would cost me. Okay. The, as for the price, we'll make it cheap so that everybody can buy because... There's in some of these synthetic repellents outside are of high cost, and most of the people, example, in the slums and villages cannot purchase it. So we'll make it, we'll make it at a lower price for everybody to buy. The next team, Beyond Creation. Beyond Creation. So my name is Joyce Lynn Jato Kalio Bible, and these are my team members. I'm Jessica Jato Kalio. I'm Jacqueline Jato Kalio. I'm Nancy Atta. I'm Ebenezer Akonu. I'm Ramona. Our team is aimed at solving problems in the environment. 
The solutions we give to problems will not be solutions that will create other issues, but there will be solutions that will solve the problems completely. So one problem our team is aimed at solving in the near future is the problem of streetism. So with this, we'll build um, affordable homes using materials like plastic to make this dream possible. So our team member, Jessica, will give us the reason for our choice of team. The reason for the choice of team Live Greener. Green living means making choices that will preserve and conserve the Earth's natural resources and habitat. Living green is a way to directly reduce the negative impacts of climate change as it encourages individuals to reduce their own carbon footprint. We can collectively help to reduce global temperatures. An American scientist called Professor Guy McPherson said, and I quote, if you think the economy is more important than the environment, try holding your breath whilst counting your money. He said this one who was cooperating an awareness of the need for common action to combat climate change. The statement basically means that the environment is equally important. And so Beyond Creation took into consideration the factor climate change and decided to create a MOA powered with solar panels instead of fuel. Because with the use of acid burns, it releases large amounts of carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas, into the atmosphere. The greenhouse gases trap heat, causing global warming. So our team member, Joyce Lee, will give us the overview of our project. So Amora is very innovative, and it uses science and technology. Amora uses science because it's powered by solar panels. The solar panels harness the light from the sun and converts it into electrical energy to charge the batteries that power the MOA. And AMOA uses technology because it has been programmed to be controlled with a remote. Whilst AMOA moves, it collects the weeds into the bag or the dustbin attached to it. So the bag or the dustbin is detachable. So after weed, you just have to detach it and throw your weeds away. Apart from AMOA being powered by solar panels, we also have a charging system to serve as an alternative for the solar panels, especially during the raining season. So AMOA has a streamlined design to help in air resistance. We have a manual for our MOA, and the manual helps the users to operate the MOA. So we have an aspect in the manual we've termed as safety information, and this gives the users safety tips on how to stay safe while using the MOA. We also have an other aspect we've termed as maintenance, and this helps the users to maintain the MOA, to clean it, and to also store it to prolong its lifespan. So our MOA has been designed to solve the problems associated with weeding. Just have to stand or sit at your comfort zone at a safe distance and control the MOA with the remote. So with this, if your grandfather can sit on his rocky chair and control the MOA with the remote. Because of the stress people go through during and after weeding, some people tend to hire the service of other people to mow their lawns for them. But since our MOA is easy to operate, you don't need to hire the service of anybody to mow your lawn for you, since you can do it yourself. So our team member, Ebenezer, will show, will show us how our MOA is operated. Please, how the MOA is operated. As soon as you turn on the switch, any part of the MOA starts to work. Then you connect it to a Wi-Fi. Then you go to an app. If you go to the app, it will just connect and start controlling it. Then the weed will start going to the bagger. As soon as you finish, you detach it and throw the weeds away. So at the beginning of your presentation, I was very confused, okay? Uh, because you were given an introduction to what you have brought here, but you kept stressing on the fact that you would want us to use solar energy instead of fuel meaning that solar energy can be used in several applications, okay? And then now you show us a MOA. So my question is very simple. What are you selling to us? Are you selling to us solar energy as an alternative to regular fuel, as in petrol, diesel, or you are selling to us a MOA that uses solar energy? So we are selling a MOA that is powered by solar panels. So, and it also has a charging system to help the solar panels. So to serve as an alternative for the solar panels, especially during the raining season. So when we are judging you, we should judge you based on the MOA. Yes. Please. And not necessarily the technology of you are using 
solar and ex getting us to know that this is just one of the applications. No, judge us on everything. <laughs> LPG detectors. LPG detectors kill the fire before the fire kills you. A couple of years ago, a gas filling station exploded at trade fair, leading to loss of lives and properties. Recently this year in Dansuman, a family was completely wiped out due to this gas explosion. Records available from the Ghana Fire Service shows that most of the domestic fire outbreaks are caused by LPG leakage. So we asked ourselves as a team, what can we do to prevent this fire outbreak? We decided on making a device which would detect LPG leakage. I hope you are all wondering what this device is about. Liquefied petroleum gas, mostly known as LPG. Our LPG detector is a wall-mounted device that detects the presence of flammable gases like LPG, ethanol, and methane in an enclosed area. A lot of people try to stop LPG leak the wrong way by placing a stone on it, which is totally wrong. Whenever there is a leak, the LPG detector detects and alerts the user in less than five minutes, but before it can cause any fire outbreak. There is a picture that shows the wrong way people try to stop LPG leak by placing a stone on it. The components of our LPG leak gauge detector R1, the Arduino Uno. The Arduino Uno is a device which gives the commands to the other components for them to perform their function perfectly. The MQ4 gas sensor is the device which senses the LPG leakage and then signals the others to do their function correctly. The active buzzer is the device which sounds an alarm when an LPG leakage is detected. And to the LEDs, when there is high concentration of LPG in the atmosphere, the red one is going to switch on. And when there is no LPG leakage or there is low concentration of LPG leakage in an area, then the green LED will switch on. The LCD display shows an inscription that there is an LPG leakage or not. The LPG detector is a wall-mounted device which detects the presence of LPG in the atmosphere. When the power source is connected into the device, the LCD screen comes on. It takes a total of two minutes for the gas sensor to warm up and for the green LED to come on. So now we are waiting for the green LED to come on. When the green LED comes on, it signals that everything in the atmosphere is normal or there is low concentration of gas. Now the green LED is on. My friend is going to test our device now. I'm about to use butane and propane gas to test the device. Butane and propane are all components of LPG. In the, in the pres uh, absence of an LPG cylinder, we can use butane and propane gas. As you can all see, now that there is a leakage close to the gas sensor or in the atmosphere, now that there is high concentration, the red LED came on. The buzzer also sounded an alarm, and on the LCD screen was written, LPG leak detected. But when the concentration of gas went low due to ventilation, the red LED went off and the buzzer stopped sounding. And on the LCD screen was written, no LPG leak detected. Well done. I'm impressed you. with your, your project, your presentation. Every, who did a sketch of the, the diagram in front of you? Oh, you, you're an artist. That's nice. That looks really good. Um, so uh, you've done really well with um, what you've done so far. Um, are you guys willing to take it a step further? After the competition, you will just leave it and go your various ways. What no, you we, are trying, we are planning to take a step further. What do you want to do after the competition? Um, to make it um, a multi-detector that could also detect other combustible gases. After junior high school, what happens to the project? We'll still continue. After senior high school? We'll still continue. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so what I'll offer to you on this project is guidance and mentoring along the journey. Um, Thank round you. Of applause.
Um, aside that, I am at Academic City University. I manage the Innovations and Technology Center. We have a MIC lab where you can continue to work on this project. So I'm committing to make sure that the MIC lab will be open to you to keep receiving mentoring and continue to work on this. All right, good job. Thank you. The only thing, the only thing I wanted to know though was, it's, since this is a prototype, is that going to be the regular size or is it going to be smaller, flatter, that's all? On our future plans, maybe when we change it, we'll, we'll determine, it will determine how it will be.